Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. Let's start applying welfare economics. But before we can do that, we just need one more bit of theory. We need to understand something called deadweight loss. By now, you can probably recite gains from trade in your sleep, but just to remind you once more, they have a net benefit to buyers plus the net benefit to sellers, that's the amount the seller receives, less their opportunity cost, plus any government revenue, and plus any benefits or minus any cost to anyone else. And we're going to define this thing called a deadweight loss as simply the difference between the actual social surplus and the maximum social surplus. Well, the first thing we need to do is think about a market and work out what is the maximum social surplus that you can get in the market. Let's start off with a perfectly competitive market. We have dollars on the vertical axis, quantity on the horizontal axis. We have our market demand curve and our market supply curve. And our initial equilibrium is where market demand and supply cross at a price of $1 and a quantity of 4 and we're going to make one other really important assumption that there are no external costs and no external benefits in this market. Given that assumption, my claim is that the perfectly competitive market outcome, this equilibrium of a price of one, but most importantly, a quantity of four, is an outcome that maximizes social surplus. Let's see. So here's our claim. In this situation, the perfectly competitive market outcome maximizes social surplus. Well, let's start off by working out what social surplus is in the perfectly competitive equilibrium. Our consumer surplus is the area under the demand curve, above the price line, up to the quantity the consumers buy. So our consumer surplus is given by the blue shaded area here. And our producer surplus is the area above the supply curve, under the price line, up to the quantity sold. So our producer surplus is simply given by the pink shaded area down here. Add those two bits together, our consumer surplus plus our producer surplus, that gives us our total social surplus, and that's given by the purple shaded area here. So the purple triangle represents the total social surplus at the perfectly competitive market equilibrium. Now let's ask ourselves what happens if we move to any different market outcome. Let's hold the price that we trade at at $1, but let's change the quantity. For example, what would happen if the government said that the amount traded cannot be any more than three units? Well, in that situation, consumers can only buy three units. So even if they've got a price of $1, their consumer surplus is the area above the price of a dollar, below their demand curve, up to the actual quantity they're allowed to buy. So their consumer surplus is now given by the smaller blue shaded area. And for producer surplus, if producers can only sell three units, then their producer surplus is the area under the price of a dollar, above their supply curve, up to the quantity they can sell. The producer surplus is given by the smaller purple area here. Put the producer and the consumer surplus together, and what do we have? Well, we have the social surplus. When buyers and sellers can only trade three units, what is that? Well, it's given by this pink shaded area here. You'll notice that that is smaller than the triangle of social surplus that we had under perfectly competitive market when buyers and sellers could trade four units. How much smaller? Well, if you compare our new area of social surplus compared to the social surplus triangle under the perfectly competitive market equilibrium, you'll find that the reduction in social surplus when you can only buy and sell three units is given by the shaded area here, that yellow colored triangle. So that yellow colored triangle is a reduction in social surplus when buyers and sellers are only allowed to trade three units rather than the perfectly competitive market outcome of four units. And notice that we get this loss for any quantity. Choose any quantity less than four units. Choose one unit or choose two units. 
Choose three and a half units if you like. Any quantity less than four units. If buyers and sellers are only able to trade less than four units, you will always get a loss of social surplus given by this sort of triangle that we've got here. So any reduction in trade below four units reduces social surplus. But what about if we have trade above four units? What happens if the government introduced a law that required that buyers and sellers trade, say, five units? If they don't buy and sell five units, they're taken out the back and shot. What happens to social surplus now? So let's start off by asking, what is consumer surplus when buyers are forced to buy five units? Well, it's the area under the demand curve, above the price line, up to the quantity that the buyers buy, which is given by five units. Well, the first part of that is easy enough. We have the area under demand, above price, up to four units. That's consumer surplus, and that's given by the purple shaded area here. But what about between the fourth and fifth unit? Notice that the demand curve is below the price line. The fifth unit is a unit that buyers wouldn't want to pay a dollar to buy. They're forced to buy it because the government's making them, but it's actually a unit that they might only value at, say, or perhaps about 70 cents. So they're being forced to pay a dollar for something that they only value at 70 cents. That means they're losing. That means that they're losing consumer surplus. So what we have here is a triangle of negative consumer surplus. It's an area that's actually below the price line, above the demand curve, between the fourth and fifth units. So consumer surplus here is the purple area, the positive bit of consumer surplus, take away the red area, because the red area is the equivalent of negative consumer surplus. So compared to the perfectly competitive equilibrium when buyers were only buying four units, being forced to buy a fifth unit lowers consumer surplus by the red triangle. And similarly, we can ask, what is producer surplus when producers are forced to sell five units? Well, it's the area above the supply curve, below the price line, up to the five units traded. But that again is going to have a positive area and a negative area. We have an area where the supply curve is above the price line. We have an area where sellers would only want to sell a fifth unit at say a dollar ten, but they're forced to sell that fifth unit and only get a dollar for it. They're making a loss. They're getting less than their opportunity cost on the fifth unit. They're getting negative producer surplus. So the total producer surplus is the positive blue area, the area where producers are gaining from trade, take away the negative red area where producers are being forced to sell something for a dollar when their opportunity cost is more than a dollar. So because the producer surplus is the blue area, take away the red area, the producer surplus is less than in our perfectly competitive equilibrium. It is less than that by the red area here. So now we can put it together, we can ask the question, what is the total social surplus when we have excessive trade, when the government forces people to trade five units, even if they'd only like to trade four units? Well, we have our positive area of social surplus, which is the pink area, but we also have a negative area of social surplus, which is given by the red area. So compared to the perfectly competitive equilibrium, we have a loss of social surplus given by the red triangle over here. And you know what? You can do that for any quantity out here to the right of a perfectly competitive equilibrium. Choose five units, choose six units, choose seven units. Choose any number of units you like past the perfectly competitive equilibrium and that will lead to less total social surplus 
than the perfectly competitive equilibrium. You have less total social surplus because you have excessive trade. People will be buying things at a price above what they value them. People will be selling things for a price less than their opportunity cost. So now we've shown our key result. The perfectly competitive equilibrium maximizes social surplus when we have no external costs and no external benefits. But remember, we defined deadweight loss as the loss of social surplus compared to the maximum level of social surplus. Well, if the maximum level of social surplus is given by perfectly competitive trade, then we know what the deadweight loss is. For example, if the government only allows buyers and sellers to trade three units. It's the triangle of loss that we showed before. It's this pink triangle. So that pink triangle there is the deadweight loss due to too little trade. If the government passes a rule saying you can only trade three units when the market equilibrium would lead to four units trade, there's a loss of social surplus. There's a deadweight loss compared to the maximum compared to the perfectly competitive outcome, and that's given by this pink triangle. But what does it mean? Why is it a loss? Well, that pink triangle represents foregone gains from trade. What do we mean by that? Well, notice that for these units between three and four, that the height of the demand curve, remember that represents the value to the buyer the height of a demand curve is above the height of a supply curve. And remember, the height of a supply curve is the seller's opportunity cost. So buyers value the unit at more than the opportunity cost to sellers. If the sellers sell it to the buyers, there is a gain from trade because the good is moving from a low opportunity cost to a high value. But the government is stopping that trade. So this pink area represents gains from trade that we would have in a perfectly competitive market, but the government policy is stopping those gains from trade from being realised. What about the situation when there's excessive trade? What about the situation when we have more trade than the perfectly competitive equilibrium? Well, again, we know what the deadweight loss is due to the excessive trade. We know that it's the loss compared to the perfectly competitive equilibrium. And so we know it's this yellow triangle out here that we solved before. But what does it mean? Well, this pink triangle down here, our deadweight loss triangle, is a loss because we're selling units. We're selling the units above the perfectly competitive equilibrium where the buyer's value from the units is less than the seller's opportunity cost. So we're moving something from a seller who has an opportunity cost of, say, $1.20. We're moving it to a buyer who only values it at, say, 80 cents. If you take something from a person who values it or has a cost of $1.20 to someone who only values it at 80 cents, you're throwing away 40 cents. And that's what this triangle here represents. It's a loss due to excessive trade because we've gone past the equilibrium quantity. We've got a situation where the demand curve is below the supply curve, where if these goods are traded, instead of creating value, this bit of trade destroys value. And that's our deadweight loss triangle. So to summarise, we define deadweight loss as the difference between actual social surplus and the maximum social surplus. And we showed that in the absence of external effects, the perfectly competitive equilibrium leads to the maximum social surplus. That is an important result that is sometimes called the first fundamental theorem of welfare economics. But it also means we can work out our deadweight losses easily. We look at what the perfectly competitive equilibrium would be, and then we note that there will be a deadweight loss whenever the quantity traded is not equal to the quantity where demand and supply intersect. And then we're able to work out our deadweight loss by looking at the change in social surplus, and we can interpret what it means. Is it a loss due to 
too low a level of trade, due to not exploiting all the gains from trade, or it could be a loss due to excessive trade, where we're actually destroying value by having too much trade. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next time.